Hey everybody and welcome back to Broussard Homestead and I hope you forgive us for being a little bit late tonight. So far in the chat we've got Canadian <clears throat> Mind and Body Co. and Built on the Rock Homestead. Good to see everybody. It has been non-stop here lately. Amy's going to be here in just a second. Let us know that you can see us and hear us well. Rushing you too fast. Rushing you too fast, huh? Five minutes late. Hey, you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, right? I don't have much to talk about yet. <laughs> All good. Good deal. Uh, the weather has been beautiful. That's a that's a good thing. Yeah, we've been able to do some cool stuff. We got some gardens, gardens started, and and <gasps> things are growing, and spent some extra time. Well, we left the uh, the grass, not even really grass. We left the sea of clover. The stuff. To grow a little longer this year we, we took a little longer before we started mowing i did i did some mowing today the mosquitoes are getting pretty bad so i, I mowed some mosquitoes. of the immediate area around the house but um we're we're kind of getting to letting things come up to see what we've got <clears throat> it, it is starting to get warm y'all just woke me up from my nap <laughs> Well, welcome, Anne Marie. It's good to see you. Hey, Anne Marie, are you still having? Um, are you getting your lit pot running? Thrifty, good to see you. You're not having any issue, any more issues with it. Now the lit pot. That's not something we need to update about. Mm. The lit pot. If you don't know, the lit pot is um, <clears throat> a little countertop. Uh, hydroponic. There you go. Hydroponic system. Did you get any? We did get the weather last oh, yeah. week. Yes. There was a tornado that mm -hmm. ran about two miles south of us. I was on duty that morning. We heard it. Me and Abby heard it. I had it. to drive the fire truck in that mess. But, uh, <clears throat> and then I ended up getting some kind of stomach virus and had to come home. No more issues, thanks. I'm getting ready to do a second planning this week. Well, ours sprung a leak. And um, we took it all apart. I cleaned it out, um, refilled it, set it on the counter, and thought the leak had stopped. Wasn't leaking anymore. Moved it back to the, posi the spot that it was in. And all I did was, um, like, what, a week later? Something like that. Um, I set it to auto auto fill. Seemed like it overfilled. And yeah, it decided to just dump water everywhere. So it's outside at the moment. I took it all apart. I put um, I had fourteen little seed um, little sponges filled with yarrow seeds. And uh, they were seedlings, so I took the sponges and I planted them in cups, and they seem to be doing okay so far. So we're gonna, far, so good. We're going to see how they do. Because I really don't want to use, I don't want to lose the yarrow, but at the same time, I can't have it leaking all over the living room. So, <coughs> yeah, definitely keep an eye on it. I think it was leaking where the tube was coming in. Either that or it was like the float in it is not telling it when to stop filling. So it may be overfilling. It wasn't a horrible leak. Thank God I had a, a silicone uh, mat underneath it with a little bit of a lip. But um, when I caught it this last time, it the, the mat was full. Full of water. So, yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to see how that goes outside. And uh, I'm going to still use it outside. Uh, I'm going to set it up underneath the awning for the shed. And I will use it as a propagation area. Like um, for like some of my house plants or, you know. Um, cuttings. Yeah, cuttings or elderberries <clears throat> or things like we'll that. We'll try it in different ways. See if we can still utilize it. Yeah. Canadian, welcome. That, but that way, if it leaks, it leaks outside and not inside my house. So there's that. So we've gotten kind of gotten a new passion lately for the native plants. That's been fun. We uh, Sunday, <clears throat> we went out to a few locations and uh, we were able to not only identify some plants, but uh, some of them we were able to even collect and bring here and add to our little garden. Oh, I forgot. Let me let me backtrack a little bit. Wednesday of last week, we went and visited with um, a gentleman down the road who has a uh, like a native habitat. It is. He's a, he's a master natural naturalist <clears throat> and a master gardener. People who don't know any better would drive by and think he just hasn't mowed his grass. It's, uh, but it's from just, the road. It looks just kind of overgrown and let it, it be. It, it's a little overwhelming until you have a chat with him and he starts telling you like what the different plants are and how cool they look because there's a lot of them that are really unique. Yeah. Like the different milkweeds and I didn't know there was that many milkweeds. I don't know that many native milkweeds. <clears throat> so really cool. That was pretty awesome. Uh, and walking around his yard, I just want his yard now. <laughs> so it may we've got a lot been, of clover. We we have a lot of yard to fill up, but um, we've been. What day was it that we went to Lorraine? That was Sunday. Was it? We went to Lorraine Bridge. Okay. I woke up in a funk. I just couldn't couldn't shake it. Or he's lazy and knows how to fake it. No, he's a biologist <laughs> and knows all the scientific names for all these plants. I promise you. Because some of the ones I was like, um, English? Yeah, he'd start spouting off the scientific names and we're like, huh? <laughs> okay, what would I call it? <laughs> <clears throat> I'm planting clover so I don't have to mow it. We have a sea of clover, and it's so <laughs> thick that we had to cut it because the mosquitoes are just getting too much. The good thing about clover, though, is you can cut it, and a week later, it's it's all going to come back. But it is starting to warm up, and the clover is going to go away as the the heat increases. So um, we are leaving, like, big patches of it, though, just kind of away from the house where we hang out. So... There was a few things when we were talking to Robbie, um, the biologist, we were, uh, a couple of things that we have here that he doesn't have yet, and he was interested. So he's going to come out at some point and uh, and have a look around at our look around at our place. <clears throat> the goal is if we can identify what is it seventy five native species of plants, right? On, our, on, on our the property. property, then we can get certified as a um, gold level gold level native habitat. So, yeah. so um, that'd be really cool. I think it'll be neat. I, I'm looking forward to having some more of the native plants and and things like that that are going to come back and um, just most herbs with a strong propagate themselves scent a strong odor will help to keep insects away. Um, mint does help, but just sitting there, it doesn't help. <laughs> it has to be like tussled around. So the scent is released. If we have a heavier wind, it will help. Same with like lemongrass, um, the mint, the oregano, uh, I think catnip is one. Pretty much all of the basil. herbs. Yes. Basil. I love the smell <clears throat> of basil. It smells like crawfish boil. To me. I don't 
Uh, something might start watching her walk. Ah, nanny. Darlene is here. Rosemary is one. I have two rosemary plants. They're they're little bitty. Um, they're getting there though. They're doing really well. Um, I have six um helichrysum plants in that same bed, but I'm dealing with some kind of weird caterpillar bug on those. So tomorrow they're getting a a a good uh, dose of um, diatomaceous earth. Well, hello and welcome, Kevin. Good to have, good to have you along. Um, there's enough herbs out there. We shouldn't have any mosquitoes, but you know, I want to plant lemongrass and mint in my backyard. Dogs want a little trumpet. Really, lemongrass? I I had mine in a bucket. Taking a teaspoon of white vinegar for, like, to keep the mosquitoes from biting you? I'm not taking vinegar. <laughs> That's not happening. The mosquitoes just can deal with it. I mean, you could probably eat a pickle or something, you know, something pickled. And that might do the same thing. Because that's got vinegar in it. I don't know. Makes sense to me. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm working on trying to create a natural bug spray using one of the native plants that we have here. So um, I haven't really started on that yet, but I'm, I'm in the research stage. So y'all know me. I have to research everything like 40 times before I jump into it because uh, I want to make sure that I'm doing it right. We have a few things that we added to our product line. Not everything has made it to um, Etsy yet. So it's just local at this point. But uh, I've got two, two um, chili blends, one regular, one spicy. And according to Michigan Daffodil, they're both going to be spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Daffodil. Um, and... We created a magnesium spray as well. Yeah, the magnesium spray is amazing for those of us with magnesium deficiencies. Most people are magnesium deficient. Because stress, caffeine, too much. We drink too, too much, much coffee. coffee. We worry too much. Yes. We not eat sleeping too much enough. Processed crap. Yep. But um, I've been using the magnesium spray on my lower back, which has been helping tremendously. But I'm also spraying it on the bottoms of my feet at night before I go to bed. And one thing I've, I've really noticed is um, I've had a tingling sensation in my feet since I was probably 16, 17 years old. I've been told it was the beginning of neuropathy, which I don't know. I knew it was some kind of nerve thing. I haven't really pushed that issue, but um, I just kind of deal with it. And um, using the magnesium spray, that tingly feeling on the bottom of my feet is gone. Like, gone. I can walk barefooted in my house now, and my feet don't hurt. It's That's pretty incredible for me. So I'm excited, and it helps me sleep pretty good, too. So. There's a question about Kate. You you heard from Kate recently. Um, Kate is de still dealing with the grieving process. Um, she lost her mom. She lost her stepdad. And she lost her husband. All within a short span. You know, and not super short, but even still, she's, she's still trying to grieve all three and deal with estates and finances and all that stuff um the magnesium on your like to spray it on your back your back your knees your legs it helps with restless leg syndrome it helps with um it helps to relieve the muscle tension and it's, help help the muscle to relax it's one of those holistic remedies it's yeah. like it, it works on your body as a system right so when your body is deficient in something, then the whole system can get out of whack. I will definitely um, let her know, Canadian. 
Um, you haven't put the magnesium on it. I haven't. No. Let me. Um, I need to work out the shipping on that because um, it is glass bottles. So I need to make sure that I have it um, that's packaged that, really that's well and like. really tight so it doesn't bust. It's a four ounce bottle. But um, I, I don't have much faith in the postal system at this point. Um, Michigan Daffodil, I mailed her a package on, what, April the 4th? And it still has not gotten there. And tracking shows that it's just hanging out somewhere in Baton Rouge. So um, I'm going to go to the post office tomorrow. And I was supposed to go today, but then I realized I was out of comfrey sap because I'm just going to send her another one. But um, we sell the magnesium spray locally for 20 yeah, bucks. Lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. $20 for the four ounces. It's a four ounce bottle, but the four ounces last a long time. You can spray up to up to 20 sprays a day. And the good thing about magnesium spray is that you won't, um, you cannot overdose on it because it's topical. Your body's only going to absorb what it needs and it'll shed off the rest. So, um, hey Jane, when you, you take magnesium, by. when you take magnesium by mouth, um, you can get a magnesium toxicity from it. Now, from what from our research, though, the only people who can't have the magnesium spray is um, people with kidney failure. Yeah. Now, there are some autoimmune disorders that. Uh, so, I would I would ask your doctor if you if you really want to use it and and you question it, um, I would ask about it. You know. But I haven't come across anybody yet that has used it and had any issues with it. It will make um, it sometimes like when you start using it, it'll make your um, skin sting a little bit with, with the first application. Um, this stuff doesn't because <laughs> I, I added some aloe to it, which kind of helps. But they say the stinging is caused by. It's, it's basically your body's way of telling you you were ma magnesium deficient. From what you told me, it's because it's trying to absorb it so fast. Right? No. No? It's because your body... It, well, it's a reaction because your body's absorbing it and you're, you're, you're deficient in it. Um, yeah, the comfrey and calendula, but I was out of comfrey salve today when I went to go back your box, uh, Michigan. So... I made a batch of the salves and I have it ready now. So um, tomorrow I can bring it with me to the post office and get that shipped out. And hopefully this one gets there. And Marie says, I wonder if you can use an older dog. Um, I haven't looked up the magnesium for um, pets. The calendula you can. Calendula salve is safe for dogs. Comfrey is too. Um, you just don't want them to lick on it and ingest it. So put it in a spot where... Like they can't get to it. So like on the back of their neck um, and their, their body will absorb it. But um, the calendula, they can lick it all day long. The comfrey isn't toxic. It will, um, if it's ingested a lot of, it'll make them nauseous and sometimes have diarrhea. So we don't want that because <laughs> if that's a house dog, we definitely don't need that in the house. I haven't looked up the magnesium uh, for dogs yet. That's something I do want to research because I have a 15-year-old Chihuahua that barely does anything <laughs> anymore because she she is like old and arthritic. I mean, kind of like you. Well, um, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> Thank you, Canadian. Um, I almost read that out loud. <laughs> so, uh, one of the fun things we found. <laughs> while out uh, <clears throat> foraging is uh, a big beautiful patch of self heal oh it was gorgeous oh I was so excited I have a little bouquet right behind your head uh oh don't some, drop it some of them are sagging they're supposed to be I put them in water because I wanted them to the flowers to finish um, doing what they need to do and dry so that I can have the some, seed. 
some people call this heal all. We're we're in the process of researching what what all we can do with it. Um, big dreams, turmeric. You can add turmeric, like in like sprinkle it, just to sprinkle a little bit on their uh, like wet food. And um, turmeric is great for in inflammation and it's safe for dogs. Uh, ginger is as well. Ginger has a little more of a peppery <clears throat> flavor though for them. So they may not like the ginger. Chloe doesn't even notice the um, the tumor because I put that in her food. But it helps. It does. Thank you. Weeds, That's, uh, yeah, weeds are just native plants. Kind of what we're we're into lately. Now some some are uh, some weeds are not native plants, and those are bad. The not, not necessarily not all, but bad. They can but... be bad for the environment. Like here we fight we fight tallow trees. Yeah. Big time. <clears throat> <coughs> Which here the tallow trees are good to help the bees because the bees love the pollen from the tallows. But <laughs> they should be getting their pollen from the native plants and yeah. pollinating those so that they won't <clears throat> spread. I have way too many native plants. Hey, Frenchie. <laughs> we have tons what of else? grass. What else did we find that was really cool? I wish it, I don't really I don't have pictures to share, unfortunately, but uh, we found that green milkweed. Uh, well, it's a type of milkweed, but it's called ante it? antelope horns. I don't know. That was a really unique plant. I took some pictures. Well, that well, that was a moth thing. We were able to collect some though and put them here in the. That's the selfie. Well, that's the one here, but. I, we we made a new little bed, uh, planting bed, and uh, lined it with logs. <clears throat> I didn't take uh, any pictures of that. Oh, I have one. Let me see if I can pull it up. We got smart though. Instead of pulling all the the grass from underneath it, we used the propane torch. There wasn't a whole lot of grass there anyway, but um, we used the propane torch and we scorched the ground, um, not only to slow down the the grass that was underneath, but also burning the the weeds and stuff adds another little bit of nutrient back to the soil. Um, then we added, I added a bunch of worm castings and some cow manure compost, and we put these logs all, all the way around. I'm using the logs as a barrier right now. It's just, it's tallow trees that we cut down, but, um, the barrier is eventually going to break down and feed the plants. So the barrier is going to go away after a while, but it's going to give me time for the plants to spread out and fill in that area. And then by that point, we won't need to know where they are. Right now they're tiny, so I don't want to run them over with the mower. There. Do you ever use the picture of this app and have you had any luck with it? I use the picture of this Love app, the picture of this app. almost every day. <clears throat> and then the next one we got um, that Robbie told us about is called iNaturalist. And you can actually um, input all the um, plants and birds and animals and trees and everything that you have in your yard, and it's going to save it all for you. And then, like, somebody else can come in under your project and say, yeah, that's what that is, and and kind of verify something for you if you don't know the, the, the name of it, you know, the technical name for it or whatever. So it's a pretty neat app. That's the one I've been playing with the last couple of days and <coughs> trying to like input everything from in the yard. And I think there's like 80 things on there right now. And we just got it, what, Wednesday? Yeah, we're, we're, we're <laughs> coming up on 100 already. I found that picture. This is it. This is the new bed we put in. Isn't it cute? All those, every single one of those is native 
Louis native to this area plants. And they're gonna it's some of it is flowers, most milkweeds and coreopsis and wild onion and yeah. Uh, there's some mints. And we spend a lot of time outside. And I'm outside plants. all the time. Cheyenne Cheyenne um picks at me because she says I should be walking outside barefooted for for grounding and things like that. Well, again, I don't walk anywhere <coughs> barefooted. I, I've started walking in the house barefooted, but my like we have burweed everywhere in the yard. Burweed is stickers. stickers. And it hurts to walk outside barefooted. So that's why I told her, I said, I get plenty of grounding because my hands are constantly in the dirt all the time. If I'm outside on the phone or whatever, and I'm just kind of like walking around, talking to somebody on the phone, I'm pulling weeds or <laughs> um, moving something in the garden constantly. Rocks and then bees in the clover. Yes, yes, rocks and bees. We have lots of bees right now. I definitely don't want to step on one. We're, yeah, we're not very good. We don't fight with rocks much. Especially in the South, everything yeah. fights. <laughs> what does Michigan tell me? That um, because of our heat, most of our plants have like spikes on them as like a protective mechanism <laughs> against other, I guess, bugs and predators or whatever. And... Mm, yeah. You know, speaking of that, American holly has a, a protective mechanism where when <laughs> the leaves first come out, they look like normal, you know, the football shaped leaf. And then if something starts chewing the leaves, then it turns on something. It turns on something within the plant, turns on a gene or something, and it starts to make those really spiky leaves. Really? Yep. Same plant. Huh. I won't walk there for way too many rocks. Yeah, see. Well, somebody made an order if you're in the chat. Thank you very much. Copperheads here. I'm not even wearing shorts out there. Oh, we had oh, a few snakes. That's um, we had a. Um, Thank you, Henry. Was that Eastern Racer? They got stuck in some netting in the shed and we freed him. I clipped all the netting off of it while Brett held him. He didn't even try to oh, bite I have it. a picture of that too. Actually. And then, um, oh, when we were out at Lorraine Bridge, um, a little garter snake, um, it came out. I guess I startled him, and then he ran across my feet, and I screamed like a little girl because it, it scared me because I didn't know what it was. But um, after that, we just kind of watched him in the grass for a little bit. So <clears throat> we've had a few snakes, but nothing. Oh, you found a snake in the chicken coop. Oh, I did. Yeah, earlier. But that's today. a water snake. So again, no, it, nothing venomous. If you don't like snakes, I'm sorry. Be aware. I'm about to share a picture. So that's our an eastern eastern racer snake. <laughs> well, and you can near see the water the, sources. You can see the damage on the snake that the netting caused. Well, that his his or her struggle. To get out of the netting yeah so uh we reached out to uh somebody who <coughs> knows all about snakes and uh found out that we can just like slather a little neosporin on that and, and release it out into the wild so that's what we did it never tried to strike at me or anything you did try to hit me with it well that was that was a reflex that i could not <laughs> Because it moved, it made a sudden movement, and I, I did this like, yeah. to get it away from my body. I guess it was a reflex, and it landed. The, he hit me with the, the head. Snake said, <laughs> "How do they taste? I don't know." Michigan <laughs> said, "Okay, saw it. You can take it down now." <laughs> <laughs> I would love to go barefoot, but I just mm -hmm. there's too many stickers and rocks and bees and yeah. I just downloaded the iNaturalist app. You may never see me again. <laughs> um, Big Dream, there's a way that you can, like, there's a way that you can do your project and we can do ours as, uh, like, and 
there's a way to save it to where like I favorite or join your group. And so that I can see all of your um, observations is what they call it. And then we, you could see ours. And uh, I think it's pretty neat because you can add like comments and things. Like if you don't know what something is, then, uh, you know, somebody else can come along and identify it for you it's and, really, yeah, and it's, add little comments. It's to It's community it. based. It's, it's pretty it's cool. cool. And uh, there's a group here from the Southwest Louisiana Master uh, Master Gardeners. So going through their stuff and looking at all the different native plants that they found, and it, it there's a map that you can look at where it, where that um, plant was tagged and everything. It's pretty neat. <clears throat> A 40 foot snake. long snake. Good grief. Oh, uh-uh. Put in, yeah, putting the board in the in the water is a good idea. Oh, for lizard. I yeah, I need to put my um little stick. I had a bamboo stick in the outdoor sink because like oh so many things get stuck get caught in there, yeah. and they can't get back up the side of the sink. So I had a piece of bamboo in there and I moved it the other day. I need to go put it back. Because every once in a while I'll find a really tired lizard <laughs> sitting in the sink. And I'm like, oh. So I'll move them and, you know, put them out of the sink and, and whatever so they can kind of rest and relax. But, like, they're wore out from trying to get out of there on their own and can't. I don't know if you said this already because I was probably reading the chat. Where you, you were probably saying. just not paying attention. What about the iNaturalist app? You can, you can identify plants. Insects, Anim animals, trees, fungi. Oh yeah, fungus too. I didn't. I didn't do that one. It is pretty neat. So, so really, really any living organism. I haven't tried taking a picture of Amy to see what it says. <laughs> see what I gotta put up with. <sighs> you just you make me tired. <laughs> Oh, yeah, stacking rocks would be a good idea. I did that in my bird baths, too. Like, uh, hey, when it I might the, tell you the brain. When oh. I have the bird bath set up, I usually put um, little river rocks in it. That way, um, the bees and stuff can sit on the rocks and, and get little drinks of water so they don't have to risk getting eaten in the pond. <laughs> I've been, like, this morning, I zoomed way in to get a picture of a fox squirrel and put it on the app. I don't know if they would tell you the breed of the dog. I imagine it will. It's possible. I don't know. I've been taking pictures of birds and butterflies. Let me send you that one of the moth thing that I found this morning so you can <coughs> put it up there. Because um, I have to say, this is the first time I've ever seen that. And... Um, It's a pretty strange looking critter. It's pretty, but at the same time, kind of weird. It says sending. Yeah. Okay. Share this. I forgot what it said, what it suggested as far as. I don't know. I put it in there for somebody to, to try to. Um, cool looking little moth, though. Hey, Monica, good to see you. Oh, she's doing the, the Master Gardener program. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. This moth, I don't remember what kind of moth it is, but it gives me like 80s hairband <laughs> vibes. Oh, I said this one to. Um, Michigan daffodil. She didn't know what it was. <clears throat> the white mullet. It it's isn't it a strange looking little bug? And I just happened to come across it. 
Can anybody identify that one? You Wait, could, I didn't share it. If you're yet. not from Louisiana. <laughs> I haven't shared it yet. You slow. There we go. See if you know what this is. And Marine gets the salamander. <laughs> I think there's an app for dogs, but I don't know what it's called. Huh. Huh. That's crazy. Oh, you sent me something like that? Yeah, I sent you a picture of Lorraine Bridge so they know what we're talking about. Oh. Okay. The area. So before we move on, this is a skink. Yeah, like a skunk, but with an eye. It's there. It doesn't look anything like a skunk. They're actually kind of like kind of like a lizard, but it's they're cute. They don't bother anything. They eat bugs, which I like. So, <laughs> you know. Right, this is this is the area known as Lorraine Bridge. It's really a cool, uh, very photogenic It's a beautiful place. Probably six, seven miles from our, our <laughs> place. If you took a picture of bread, it would probably say eight. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. I didn't see it. That's Henry. That, that's between you and Henry. Do <laughs> they stink? No, they actually don't. I, I've never smelled this skink. I don't. I, the kids always call them lizards. Now, they might emit a stink if you, like, try to catch them. I don't know. I've never tried to I catch no one. I have no idea. I don't want to pet them. They're just really cool to watch laying on the rocks. I have to refill my water. That is the bridge that we took Lippy to. I forgot about that. Yeah. And Kate. We, we, have, we took Kate out there. Rachel's been out there. It's a cool, a cool destination. The, uh, the original bridge, it was a similar wooden bridge. It decayed, and uh, rather than just build a, a, a contemporary bridge or a, a modern bridge, they, uh, they built an, an, an old wooden bridge to replace it. Yeah, one very similar. Yeah. <coughs> I'm hoping that we can make a trip very soon. To um, down to Cameron Parish, down to the marshes and and stuff like that, and maybe we can get some footage. Cause uh, they've got pelicans and stuff down there. That's cool. Yeah, they have all sorts of stuff down there. And it's. I'm bringing a shovel and a couple of buckets. I'm just saying, <laughs> cause some of those plants may just come back home with me. <clears throat> I'm really enjoying like learning the new um, the native plants and and finding new ones. We it's, found some sensitive plant. It's a great time of year to do so too. Yeah, we found some sensitive plant on the side of the <laughs> pond, and um, they were there last year, but I didn't know that they bloom. Oh right. We found some out in the um, a little prairie remnant that uh, Robbie told us about. It makes like a fuchsia colored it's, snowball. Like a little puffball. What is that Dr. Seuss thing? Horton Hears a Who or something? The little puffball that is in the book. I I don't know. I don't that's I don't, what it reminds me I of. I mean, I remember like I think it's Horton. I think I remember one. all of the Dr. Seuss books, but I couldn't tell you couldn't tell them apart because in my mind the the animation of all of them is so similar. I have a picture of the flower <clears throat> if you want it. Sure. Gonna try to propagate rosemary. Wish me luck. My potato slips. Oh, good. Oh, but oh, sweet potato sw slips are so pretty. I I don't know. I just like them. I want to plant some and just let it vine around my house, but I think it might get a little overwhelming. I'm gonna try to propagate some rosemary, but um, mine aren't really big enough to take cuttings from yet. So I don't want to clip them back too much and and mess with them. So um, I'm waiting, but I really want to try because okay. I really like rosemary. 
the sensitive plant. These uh, these fern looking leaves are the plant itself, and uh, and it's called pink, a sensitive plant because when you touch it, like the little fern shaped leaves close up, kind of like a fly trap. It's kind of cool. Can't even get my sweet potatoes to get eyes on them. Take a sweet potato from the store. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Glass with rainwater. Put your sweet potato in it and set it in the window. That thing will grow so many freaking vines. It just <coughs> it keeps going and going. And then I, I broke the vines off as close as I could to the potato and put those in, down in the water. And when they start getting roots, I chucked them outside. We did what twelve starts, twelve slips, and they filled like both sides of the yeah wooden beds. By the and way, they were growing out of the beds and down across the yard. I had to keep trimming them. <laughs> we've been we've been slowly taking down the the cedar beds. Unfortunately, they've they they did uh, four seasons for us, four growing seasons, and then uh, yeah, they're, the they're ants rotting eat away. Them. Um. It's a little different than an avocado because the avocado the, doesn't the seed have to sit above the water, whereas the potato you just stick it in the water. Half in the water. Yeah. Just make sure the bottom of it stays with water in it. Add water every once in a while when it gets low. And oh, Monica says she started hers in the dirt. I've never done sweet potato slips in dirt. I don't see why it wouldn't work though. Just keep the dirt wet. What, Chloe? You heard me talking about you? Come here. Come on. You want to be a part of the show too? They look my little old self. Poor baby, she can't see no more mm -hmm. hardly. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him you don't like him. Hmm. You got my sweet potatoes from Trader Joe's. And, and you don't have to buy a certain potato, a sweet potato. Um, we get them here from um, Garber Farms, which is a huge sweet potato farm. But um, you can get a sweet potato from the store and they'll work. Let's try this live. Chloe. See if it'll tell us she's a chihuahua. Oh, is that what you're doing? Yeah. Nothing. We're not confident enough to make <laughs> a recommendation. It's a dog. Yeah, fool. well, that didn't work out. Yeah. Fail live on YouTube. I'm, oh, you bought the sweet potato seeds? It, that's not being a dummy. I mean... Um, people buy potato, like seed potatoes, and you don't really have to. You can buy them from the store and, and just stick the bag in your pantry. That's what I normally do. My mom spends a ton of money on sweet potatoes, like uh, seed potatoes for <clears throat> for just red potatoes. I'm like, why don't you just go to Walmart early enough in the season, buy a bag of red potatoes, and stick them in the pantry and like forget about them. Because when I do that, I get freaking plants growing out of, the, out of cabinets and all kinds of stuff. I'm like, oops, forgot them in there. I got to show you this picture, too. What? What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, <laughs> that's my baby. That's our grandbaby, Brianna. Y'all, she is sitting up so well. She's doing so good. And um, she's got two teeth in the top and two teeth in the bottom and, like, the most precious little grin. But she will not smile if you have a camera out. <laughs> she looks at you like, um, mm -mm, put it away. Um, some grocery stores spray them with a growth inhibitor. Take some baking soda and water. Put your potato in it. Scrub it a little bit with, um, like a just lightly clean it with a brush, and then you should be good to go. But I've never had any trouble with them. I've had sweet potatoes from the store, uh, red potatoes from the store, and just I stick them in the pantry and forget about them most times. 
and uh, they'll remind you in a couple months that they're there. Mine always get, I have them in these pla um, these little plastic drawers. <coughs> and I've got them all labeled and everything and they're, they're organized. But I end up buying like an extra batch. I'll buy like two or three sweet potatoes for that night and then two or three for another night. And a couple of days I forgot that I bought them. And then I go in there in a couple months or weeks or whatever, however long it takes. It's like Jumanji. And man. yeah, like the the little sprouts are starting to come out of the, the cracks of the drawer. <laughs> it's like, oh, I forgot those were in there. Planted a bunch of russet potatoes that I bought at the grocery store. They started sprouting, so buried them. Culture mouth. The only problem is I have to haul water there. Isn't the whole purpose of the hugo culture to not have to water it as much? Chopped off two raised beds and I filled, filled a new one this week. Nice. That's what I've been working on too. As we're taking down those wooden those wooden beds, I'm reusing <clears throat> the soil because it's amazing soil. So I'm making sure to keep, like, I'm I'm moving it to other beds that are going to stay and making new beds and stuff. I'm not getting rid of that soil. <laughs> Planting my first garden. Oh, it hasn't here. rained in weeks. Oh. Yikes. I'm just planting my first garden here in Arkansas. I'll be happy if one plant lives. It'll live. Uh, what's your temperatures about now? See, we're at 76. Y'all are probably about three to four weeks behind us as far as the season goes. I remember that one year. That was in 2019. We drove up to uh, Searcy, Arkansas for the, the shindy. And it was like driving back was, in time. It that was, was uh, early, all, early April when um, our redbud tree had leaves on it. And... There was different things. I remember that specifically because red buds put on their leaves after their flowers. The flowers come on and then they fade and then the leaves come out. We, we drove up and, and we started to see like red buds still had flowers and it was weird. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, it was 87 there today. It was 81 here. I think is what we got. So uh, you're a little warmer than us. You should you should be fine to plant pretty much anything. Put it in the ground and water it. You should be good. Yeah, the red buds here are all leafed out too now. 40 degrees at the beginning of the month and 70 today. 79 today. Yeah. Yeah, we were a little chilly this this uh the beginning of this month. I can I can feel the humidity starting to move in. Here. It's starting to creep back in, yeah. And uh, that's that's the worst part of our summers is that just heavy, like a wet blanket of humidity. Would you say millions of gallons of water in the air, <laughs> just waiting yeah. to suffocate you? <laughs> <laughs> and we we've had a really nice spring this year. Um, last year, I think we had like three weeks of spring temperatures and then it just got ridiculously hot and this year we've had quite a few weeks of beautiful weather some some days are on the warmer end but the humidity has been less than normal and it has been just absolutely beautiful to work outside there's our duck <laughs> it just flew across the yard oh It's we're at seventy six right now here, and um, it's it's mild. I mean it okay, but our humidity is pretty high. Um, we've had a little bit of a breeze almost every day, so it's it's been nice. You can work outside. It it is getting a little bit warm, but you can go stand in the shade and just cool off and kind of relax. In the yeah. middle of the summer, you can't stand in the shade to cool off. You get in the shade and it's just as hot. Yeah. <laughs> you must have sent your humidity up here. I'm sorry, but um, 
You can keep it for a while if you want. I don't need it back. <laughs> keep it as long as you like. Oh. Anne Marie, I would, if I were you, I would start looking at like native plants for your area because there are a bunch of beautiful flowers. That's what I'm looking forward to is like adding some flowers for the pollinators and, you know, milkweeds for the butterflies and things like that. Whatever we visiting in the summer. I don't want to visit me in the summer either. <laughs> it's miserable here, I promise. Um, usually it's like 100 degrees plus and the humidity is like 96, 98%. It's pretty rough, but we, we've, I mean, we've adapted. We work early in the morning outside. We do what we have to do in the garden and then we hibernate in the daytime and then we go back out in the evening. Well, now that our business is getting busy, uh, we'll be able to do that in midday. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Add more topsoil first to help cover the rocks. That's true. Or you could dig up the rocks and make a rock garden. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's, I, that area is probably full of rocks, but that's like mountainy and stuff. Everything you see here is flat except for the dump. It's a hill. The landfill. Oh, shoot, they're boulders. Yeah, don't dig those up. <coughs> God. And, like, we don't have rocks here. In the, unless we put them in the ground. Like, yeah. we put rocks for driveways. We don't, and, we don't dig and find rocks here unless they've been put there by a person. I mean, you'll find, like, little pea gravel here and there. But When we lived at our old place, which was her grandparents' place... Uh, every oh, now and then, I dig and find some concrete that was left there. It was it was a part of a building or a part of a garden trellis thing that he had built because he had all kinds of stuff. You know, like north, south, northern South Carolina in the summer, it's so hot. And wow, I've been lining the whole property <laughs> with rocks. Someday I might have a whole rock wall. <laughs> You can build a castle. That's what it is. That'll, She's working on her castle. Maybe that'll keep the zombies out. Just mortar in between them and keep stacking them. I mean. Well, it's about that time. Already. Already. I don't know. You have to go back to work. He's going back to work tomorrow, and I've got yeah. some errands and things. If you guys could send tomorrow. some prayers out our way toward uh, the Lake Charles area, we did have a a retired fireman that uh, I'll be going to his funeral this weekend. So uh, if you could send some yeah. prayers for his family, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, that's a rough loss. <clears throat> and uh, prayers again for Lake Charles because um, that that not, uh, morning that the storms hit, there were 10 tornadoes that touched down it, all across the state. And uh, there, there a lot of people in the Lake Charles area again damage to, to homes damage to businesses that were just beginning to rebuild after the, the 2020 storms so well we appreciate you guys so i don't i don't know when we'll be live again chances are <laughs> the way the way we've been doing it i don't know that we're going to be live on a weekly basis anymore right um, not sure things are getting really busy we're doing the best that we can we appreciate your patience so until we see you again good night and god bless see you hopefully next week guys <laughs> you screwed up my ending <laughs> <laughs>